Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Snyder. I'm from Bell Media. And I'm here today to talk about automating operations. Isn't it great that we're in Vegas at a real conference? This is me a year ago at a virtual conference. A lot to take in. Did anyone else do like a VR, a proper VR conference during the pandemic? Anyone? Yes, we got one, a coworker. <laughs> it's pretty cool technology. They actually recreated an entire conference center in virtual reality. The problem though, when people tried to get into the room at the same time, everyone would try to rush in exactly the same time, crash the conference had to reset, uh, you know, send out a brand new app at lunch to get us all reconnected again. They needed to automate their operations. So quick logo slide uh, for anyone who uh, is not from Canada. Bell Media is Canada's largest media company uh, nationwide, offering uh, services in both English and French to about 30 million customers. Crave is our biggest streaming video platform, uh, premium platform, home of uh, HBO and Stars, with about three million customers. Um, of course, our big show was Game of Thrones, and now it's uh, Euphoria. A little bit of background. Uh, Crave was launched in 2014, uh, outsourced, and didn't really have any observabil observability. So our mandate was rebuild from scratch. And any other developers in here love the whole, you know, file new project, rebuild from scratch, it's great, right? Um, but we didn't really have a framework, we didn't really have anything to, um, to guide us. The lucky thing is, I had worked with uh, New Relic in the past and I said, I know what we'll do. We're gonna put New Relic in, we're gonna use it to give us our visibility, keep the service up, make sure it's fast, also make sure that we can deliver very quickly. We want to be able to push out updates as quickly as possible. Uh, hopefully CICD kind of got there. So three things, three steps. First step is alerts. Make sure your alerts are actually relevant and don't over alert. Nobody likes getting woken up in the middle of the night for something that isn't important. Second step. Integrate with some sort of collaboration tool. Use something that people can, in real time, communicate. Email doesn't work. You don't want email. And the third step, of course, is your whole incident response uh, process. Uh, make sure you can get the service back up quickly. Also make sure that you can automate somehow the fix. Record what you did. Make sure you can replay that later. So what's a critical service? Well, that VR conference, it was pretty critical that you could actually get in the room. So what kind of login services uh, do you need for your platform? People can't get in, you don't have a service. What's non-critical? In my opinion, anything that is operations focused. So your, your you know, logs, do you really need your logs up? Do you really need to be alerted in the middle of the night if your logs go down? I don't think so. Um, or any of the back-end management tools, do you really need to be able to add new content in the middle of the night? Maybe not. So yeah, the, just the kicker on that is just about over-alerting. The, the, the last thing you wanna do is have a ton of alerts come in at the exact same time, so try to group your alerts together if possible. So here I'm gonna take you through an example of a alert policy, if it'll play. Please play, there we go. Everyone worked with alerts already? Everyone's played with them a bit? Great. So I'm just taking us into the alert. Oh, and it jumped to the next slide. Let's try that again. And it won't play it. Anyway, what I was gonna show you was the uh, alert policies that I had set for this demo. Uh, the first policy was a uh, uh, NRQL query against our login services. I'm looking for 500 series errors uh, in our, uh, on our login endpoint. So any 500 series error would have resulted in someone not able to log in. 
the second uh, alert condition I had in there was for a um, for an API that kind of does all the layout in the app, in the Crave app. Uh, so without that, it's just a blank app. And the third one I had was an image service, so something that resizes all the images so that people have like, actual posters, actual content they can see in the app. Okay, so step two is our collaboration tool integration. So we needed a call-out tool, something to wake people up in the middle of the night. We don't actually have pagers anymore. Anyone remember pagers? I was a <laughs> couple of guys at the back. But it's great with the smartphones. You know, everyone has a smartphone, uh, an app on your phone. We chose PagerDuty, fantastic tool. Uh, lots of uh, customization you can do. Lots of um, schedules you can create and let people switch their schedules if they want to and they can control themselves. The other one was our real-time communication tool. Uh, for us, it was important that we could actually get the alert into that tool so that we could see what was happening and give a place for everyone to go in and, and start collaborating in real time. Uh, we chose uh, Slack for that one. Uh, I heard this morning Teams is another one, which is, which is fine too. So here we're going to walk through the PagerDuty service creation. And the reason I'm doing this as a service is a lot of teams at Bell use PagerDuty, and I didn't want to mix up you know, my team's uh, operations with, uh, with the, uh, the Bell TD team's operations. So I did it at the service level. New Relic is already a supported uh, integration with PagerDuty. So we're going to create the service. And then we're going to grab the API key that gets generated. And we're going to copy that key. And we can move on to the next step. All right, in the next step, where I already, I'm going to copy that key again, apparently. I'm going to jump into New Relic. I'm going to go to the destinations. And I'm going to choose PagerDuty, already support a destination. I'm going to switch it to a service level integration, give it a name, paste in the uh, integration key, and I'm done. And honestly, that was, uh, you probably saw that was about a minute, 30 seconds on the PagerDuty side and 30 seconds on the, on the New Relic side. Slack is a little easier. Slack is a, is a one-click integration. You don't have to go through the whole API key thing. All you need to do is click the one, one, uh, the one button, put your URL in for your Slack workspace. That's going to send a request off to your Slack admin. Slack admin will have to approve it. In my case, this happened in about five minutes or so. And that one's done. And it just, it just happened automatically in the background. I didn't have to click anything again. Just the destination uh, became available. So next, we're going to create a workflow for both PagerDuty and Slack. And I'm going to split these into two. And the reason for that is sometimes I like to send a little bit more information to Slack than I'll do to PagerDuty. So this allows me to tailor what I'm sending to each. But it's effectively keying off the same, uh, um, same data. And you might have noticed I did a little, a little trick at the beginning there was I grabbed the, uh, the name, sorry, the ID of the, um, of the alert that I created, that alert notification. And I'm going to paste it in here as a policy ID. And I say match exactly. And then I'm going to paste. And the reason for that is I've had people change the names of policies before, change those names, or change the names of uh, um, applications before, and then it can break if you're, if you're keying off a name instead of, a, instead of an ID. So there we go, we've activated one. And now we can go ahead and do Slack. Same thing, I'm going to use a query. I'm going to key off the policy ID so it doesn't get broken if someone changes the name. 
paste it in. Slack is already supported. So I set up a, a, a quick um, demo channel, Slack channel for this one. Um, so I can pu push all my messages into there. But this is a, a way that you could, for example, split your notifications up if you want to have the mobile notifications for the mobile team go to one Slack channel, web notifications for another team, you can go into two different channels. And we're done. That's it. So the, now the fun starts. Middle of the night, pager duty goes crazy. Someone gets woken up, opens a bridge, starts the whole troubleshooting process. They're going to jump, jump into Slack as well and start communicating with the other teams, and maybe start waking people up. Um, or if it was middle of the day, we would have seen it in Slack. The messages, the notification would have come up. Number one job, of course, is to get the service back up and running. Maybe take some notes at the same time. After everything's up and running, work on your root cause analysis, work on figuring out what went wrong, how can we prevent this in the future. So I can't do too many demos here of, of how to fix this in the future. I have one small one I'll give you though. So in this case, we got an alert for uh, heat, heat memory on a JVM uh, going a little crazy. So garbage collection would have kicked in a little late perhaps. So this popped into Slack. Right from Slack, I can click on the message. It'll take me right into the relevant page in New Relic. I already have a, um, I already have a Confluence page set up for this particular type of alert. And back then, so this was 2018, back then it was a very, uh, um, we didn't really know what was causing this issue. So we basically said, take a dump. Take a dump of everything grab the logs, we'll figure it out later. Since then, we have learned that it was, uh, it was a problem in the code itself. Developers went in, fixed the code. We don't get that kind of message anymore. So, the results. Um, well, first of all, I should knock on wood here, 100% uptime for four years. And yes, we've had incidents. We've had things to wake us up in the middle of the night. Yes, we've had small issues uh, with login. Login is a particularly tr tricky one to troubleshoot. Um, but we haven't had a, a full outage in, in the four years that we've been running this, uh, this new service. Um, also, it means that developers are now very comfortable with deploying in the middle of the business day. Used to be we would do it in the middle of the night. We would get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, do our deployments, uh, everything look okay? Yes? No. Now it's, all right, let's start our deployment at 9 a.m. Um, so 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, we're comfortable now. Also, it means that because we have all this data coming in uh, that we can rely on, it tells us performance, tells us alerts, we can focus on improving performance. So one metric is our web page load time. This is going to sound terrible, but I think we were at eight seconds when we first launched the product for a web page load time, and we're now down around three. So we've really been able to bring down our, our page load times by focusing on performance. And the great thing is, all the other Bell Media brands have followed suit. They've seen how great these three tools are working together, and they've started to use them as well. Now I just need to get that virtual conference team to use, use New Relic. And that's it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Anyone have a VR headset? A couple of people. <laughs> Does it make you nauseous as well? Yeah, yeah. In, in that image, I was leaning against the beanbag chair because I couldn't stand up with it. It would, I would fall over. Go ahead. Uh, we haven't yet, but what we've done is we have a, we have a handful, a small handful of scripts. Uh, one of them is actually the logging that I mentioned earlier. 
um, where if we notice the disk is starting to fill up, we'll go ahead and purge out the logs, but we're relying on, uh, on other tools to, to look for that. But no, I, I, I did see that. It's a, it's a great idea to, uh, to integrate with the API. Anyone else? Okay, well, thank you all for your time. <laughs>